Hello everyone, welcome to my presentation about building a language server for Salt State, part of the OpenSUSE Virtual Conference 2021. My name is Dan, I'm a software developer, part of the developer engagement program at SUSE. I'm uh, essentially responsible for building tools for other developers, for example, this one. Although this was just a hack week project, but so. So besides my day job at uh, SUSE, I'm also part of the OpenSUSE community where I'm a package maintainer of a few packages. I'm also quite active in Fedora, where I've been recently elected into Fesco. And I'm also there part of the i3 special interest group where we uh, ship the i3 spin for Fedora 34. And I'm also a package maintainer there and contribute to a few upstream projects here and there. So, but without further ado, let's take a look at today's outline. So first I'd like to cover uh, what is actually the language server protocol in case you have never heard about that. Uh, then I also cover what is salt stack, uh, the why and when. So why did we do this? When did we do this? What were the circumstances around that? The architecture of this, uh, of this server. And uh, then we'll have a brief demo what it currently can do. Uh, and finally, I'd like to uh, I'd like to showcase a few of the challenges that we faced and uh, provide a brief outlook. And with that, let's take a look at what is the language server protocol actually. So, as you might have guessed, that's a, it's a protocol, uh, actually a JSON RPC protocol, and. Uh, it addresses this old problem. So you have a whole ton of programming languages and you have a whole ton of different editors and they are all written in different programming languages, have different APIs if they have APIs at all. And now if you have programming language A and you want to, uh, and you want to give your users, uh, so other developers, you want to give them code completion, uh, documentation showing, etc. pp. Uh, in five different editors. You have to write a plugin for five different editors. And that's a whole lot of work. And every single person implementing uh, something like that for their programming language has to do that. And so that's, there's a lot of duplication going on. And the language server protocol tries to address this in the following way. So it defines a, co uh, a common protocol for all these kinds of stuff that you, uh, for all these uh, things that you want to have in an editor when working with programming languages like auto completion, diagnostics, uh, documentation showing, f um, code formatting, for instance, um, jump to definition, jump to references, refactoring, etc., etc. And so. The language server protocol defines how a language server, which is some kind of backend program that analyzes your source code, and the editor simply talks to this language server and says it, hey, I'm at this position in this file, what can I autocomplete now? Or is this thing correct? Or, um, uh, or what's the current symbol at this point? Does it have a documentation? Where is it used? and so on. And so that's defined by the language server protocol. And the cool thing about this is you as a developer of a programming language, you only have to write this backend server and you can talk to all, you can provide all these nice, uh, these niceties to your users independently of the editor that they're using, provided that it talks the language server protocol. On the other hand, if you're developing a new editor and you want your users to be able to be to have access to all these uh, all these nice things, you just have to implement the language server protocol, and you can talk to all these backend processes uh, to these all these backend servers, and you have access to a whole uh, to a whole ecosystem, and that's pretty great. So that's why we looked into it to improve the editor integration for SaltStack. So what's SaltStack? SaltStack is a configuration management software. It's, uh, it's quite comparable to Ansible in the regard that it runs in agentless mode, but it also provides a server uh, pull mode uh, like you would know it from Puppet. 
Um, it's, I would say it's more closely related to Ansible since it's also written in Python. It's also, it also uses uh, Jinja2 and YAML for, uh, for, the, uh, for your main files. And so what, um, what's also notable about SaltStack, it's, uh, it's the configuration management software behind Uyuni, which is the upstream project of SUSE Manager. Uh, so uh, what you usually write in salt uh, uh, when using salt stack are so-called salt states. Um, and these are essentially files that describe the desired state of a system. So how does this look like? So that's a mix of Jinja2 uh, for templating and YAML files. And here you can see an example. So here, for instance, we describe something that should be a web server. And that uh, in this case, it means we uh, want a package to be installed, in this case, Apache. And uh, here we use Jinja templates to distinguish the different package names for different distributions. So for your Red Hat variants, it's called, the package is called HTTPD. Uh, and on your Debian and derivatives, it's called Apache 2. Um, please keep in mind that in contrast to Ansible, the Jinja templating is applied before feeding it into, a, into YAML, which has the advantage that you can, ha you can really leverage the full power of Jinja templates. In, um, in Ansible, you can only use them really in YAML strings, which has its upsides and its downsides. So, why did we do this and, uh, and when? So the why is uh, we found editor support for configuration management to be rather lacking. So there is extensions for salt stack for various editors. Uh, same goes for Ansible, but unfortunately these are all tied to certain editors and they are not really too powerful. So usually they provide good completion. Oh. Excuse me. Uh, so they provide good completion. They provide use uh, in certain places, uh, diagnostics and stuff like that, but it's not really context aware. It's limited to one editor and configuration management is really becoming increasingly complex. And especially if you have really powerful tools like SaltStack, like Ansible, um, you can, it's becoming more like writing code, but the, uh, the tools that you have as a, someone writing this, uh, writing this stuff, they are not on par with your powerful IDEs. And we wanted to take a look if we can really write a prototype of a language server that shows that it's possible to provide you with more. And so uh, we, that's Cedric Bostona and myself, uh, we sat down during this year's Hack Week 20 in March and we developed a prototype of this. So, and what did we do? So we developed a language server and we wrote it in Python. Uh, we chose Python A because we are both familiar with it and B because SaltStack itself is written in Python and that means we have some easier interoperability with it. Um, for the language server protocol itself, we leverage the PyGLS library. So that allows us to actually, to really focus on just providing the data and, do, uh, and PyGLS then takes care of all the actual protocol talking itself. So we don't have to take care of that. Uh, we then use PyYAML for the YAML parsing. So initially we really used PyAML's YAML parser, then we briefly switched to RuaML since it provided more features, then switched back again to PyAML. And now we just use its scanner and have a custom state machine that Cedric implemented uh, so that we can uh, parse broken YAML, which is quite important in case the user is currently typing stuff. And in the future, we'd also like to use the Jinja 2 for Jinja templating, but unfortunately we're not there yet. Uh, a really currently tiny component is the uh, is the front end, so essentially the uh, the VS Code and the Emacs extension. But these are really uh, they don't do a whole ton. They just launch long language server and tell uh, tell the editor, hey, if you edit salt stack files, 
talk to this editor, uh, talk to this language server, and that's about it. And with that, let's take a look how this uh, how this currently looks like, what it can do. So what I have in here is VS Code. I have an example salt state file open. And uh, so first, let's take a look at what we can do with in terms of auto completion. So one of the things that salt stack has is these includes. You can include, uh, you can tell salt to include the definitions from other files in here. And what the language server will provide you is potential other files that you can include. So these are all the ones that this repository currently has. And so you can just, um, you can just, uh, trigger completion here and let it include whatever you like. So that's it. That's one thing. Another thing that uh, that it will complete is these uh, is the uh, is the sub module names, where you can essentially um, where it will take the uh, it will uh, find out what's the current module that you have here before the dot and it will provide you with the completion of the car uh, of the correct sub modules so if you're familiar with this you see you will see it will only give you those that belong to the file module if i for instance replace this with the git sub module it will only show you stuff of the git sub module um, or for pkg and so on yeah uh, good. So that's what's supported in terms of auto completion. Then what you can also see, uh, I hope at least in the recording, are the breadcrumbs in here. So these are also provided as docu. Uh, these are so-called document symbols in the backend, and uh, you can use these to jump around. And it essentially means that the language server is kind of uh, is aware of the structure of this document. You can jump around in that. You also saw. Some, comp uh, some documentation is shown up here, so that could be also shown here in places. And the last thing that we, uh, that's also supported is jump to definition. So what salt stack has is these so-called requires. Uh, it means that this, uh, if you want to, uh, that this state requires this other one. And what you can do, you just go right uh, right mouse button go to definition and then it will jump to the correct place it works from other places or here we have other ones okay so here i require this uh, gem jackal and boom i can jump in there so that should be about it for the demo then few challenges that we faced so one of the uh, one of the challenging parts is if you are currently typing in your editor, then you don't really have valid YAML. So we need to be uh, we need to be able to parse broken YAML. That's also why we only use YAML, uh, the PyYAML scanner, and have this custom state machine that Cedric implemented, so that we can really do that stuff. Um, yeah, meaningful testing is as usual uh, is you uh, as you might have guessed pretty challenging, especially if you have different editors in place. And the most challenging part at this point is really the Jinja 2 uh, inter interpretation. The really nasty part here is that the templating is applied before the YAML parsing, which means uh, extracting stuff from uh, stuff from files like this is uh, can be really tough because you can go really really crazy with uh, with the Jinja templating. And so this is yet an unsolved problem. Um, let's take a brief look into the future. So unfortunately, this is really just a side project for us and we don't have a whole ton of time to invest for it, into it. So unfortunately, progress has been a little bit slow. Um, but uh, the biggest thing that needs to be implemented in this is the, uh, is, as I already said, the Jinja 2 parsing. Uh, and then there's a few other stuff, things that we could implement. For instance, uh, show show the documentation of uh, of various elements, integration with salt lint to provide you with some uh, with some uh, linting of your document, 
auto completion in more places and then uh, as i showed you can jump to uh, you can jump to these requisite nodes where they are defined where they are defined it would be nice to be able to do it the other way around so to jump to where they're referenced here you can find a few links so to the source code to the extension in the vs code marketplace a blog post summary of the hack week the link to to the slides are also on github and the lsp specifications the obligatory legal slide and with that i'd like to thank you for your attention have a nice day and bye